Hello and welcome to this video on using the new Ban in a Box for Mac DAW plugin with Reaper. This new version of the plugin, version 6, is included with any purchase of Ban in a Box 2024 for Mac. There are many great new features in this new version of the plugin, and we have another video that goes over the majority of these features. But there are also some features specific to Reaper, with support for the Reaper DAW API, allowing direct transfer of Banana Box files to and from Reaper tracks, including tiny lossless files of instructions which play audio instantly from disk. You can see I have the plugin open in Reaper here, and right now I have the style picker open. This means I'm getting ready to load a style to use on my song, and you can see I've already entered chords in the main plugin. The blue spinning circle here is showing that the plugin itself is not active, and that's because I'm in the style picker. And I've already picked a style I want to use, Boat Jazz Samba Piano Trio, which has real tracks bass, real drums, and then a MIDI super track piano. So I'm first going to show you the two places where the Reaper specific features can be accessed. In the main plugin, this area contains all of the Reaper specific settings, which can be shown or hidden using this button. I can't actually click on that right now because as I've said, this whole area is not active, but I will demonstrate that shortly. And then this button has been added in version 6, allowing rendering of files direct from the style picker. This feature is available with the new version of the plugin regardless of what DAW you're using, but if you're using it in Reaper, two additional items are visible. This Reaper checkbox and this Reaper preset button. The Reaper checkbox means that the features that automatically will create tracks in Reaper will be used. These various preset buttons simply put checks in the area above for various common scenarios. And so if I press the Reaper preset button, that just gives me these choices. Now the settings it will use can be seen in the main plugin here. Right now I've just left these at the default. I'll go over all of those settings shortly, but just briefly I'll tell you that it's not going to create new tracks yet because send tracks after generating is not selected. It will just be using Reaper instructions, which are tiny files, and this means it will not need to generate brand new WAV files. Instead, it will just create very small pointer files that will point to different locations in the source material. So I'll press Render Tracks now. Now we see that beside the Real Tracks Bass plugin track and the Real Drums plugin track, there is RI, which stands for Reaper Instructions. It's not a solid color, which means that these are not draggable, but they are usable, and I'll show that in a second. Beside the MIDI piano track, it has this button that says MIDI, and this is a solid color, so I could drag that in, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to use the Send to Reaper button. So when I press that, it's going to send all three of the tracks above, because I have all tracks selected. I could do any of the individual tracks, but I do want them all. This area determines where the tracks will go. And so there's only one track I have here right now, and that's the track that actually contains the plugin, and I've actually named it Plugin. And I want them all to just go at bar one. If you wanted them further on in the file, you could set a different value here, but I just want them right at the start. Then here, this option, Start Below Reaper Track, means whatever I've selected here, it will actually put the tracks below that. By default, this is on, and that's actually what I want here, because I don't want to confuse my tracks with actual audio on them with the track that contains the plugin. Overwrite Reaper track would be useful maybe if you were just redoing a single track and wanted to make sure you weren't merging the audio with what was already there, but I don't need to worry about that for this one. For move to project folder, if I was actually creating new audio files, I'd likely want to move the tracks to the folder that this Reaper project is in. I'm using Reaper instructions rather than newly created WAV files, so this isn't applicable here. So leaving it on will make no difference here. I will actually demonstrate this a little later in the video though. Now these three items here are only applicable for generation, which I already did from the style picker. Right now they will have no effect just sending tracks to Reaper, so I'll leave these for now. I did not generate audio for the MIDI track when I generated from the style picker, so send audio for MIDI track is not applicable right now. Send Real Charts is applicable since I did select Real Charts when I generated from the Style Picker, and you can see that those are available here. But I don't think I actually want those in Reaper now, so I'll leave this off. So now I can press Send to Reaper. 
Now, when there are MIDI files involved, it will give you this message, just asking a few questions about how you want it imported. I do actually want the tempo map to be imported so that everything lines up, but I don't want to import any MIDI markers here. So now it's created three new tracks for me. It put them under the plugin track because that's what I selected here. And you can see that the two audio tracks are comprised of various segments. Each of these segments points to a different part of the source material, and these segments are what make up the real tracks and real drums performances. And then I have MIDI on this track for the piano. You can see it has markers in this file showing the chords. That's a feature you can either leave on or turn off in the plugin preferences. But when I imported this MIDI file into here earlier, it asked me if I wanted to import those as markers, which would have duplicated them up here. But I generally find that kind of cluttered up there. So I think it's fine to just leave them in here. And it's actually kind of nice to see the chords here on that track. Now for the MIDI track, I have to actually pick a plugin to play that MIDI. And I'll pick for Sando. And I'm going to use one of our playable real tracks. And I think I'll use this electric piano here. And now I'll play a little bit of this. And having those segments, instead of just a long WAV file, opens up so many new possibilities for editing. For example, I could go through and add crossfades between these segments. Also, you can see here, there is a little gap between the segments. Now, it didn't sound bad having that little gap there, but for example, I could put a split point here. That has now just converted this into two additional segments. I could hold Option and Shift, and when I do that and I hold my cursor at the end of one of the segments, it gives me this little hand icon here, which means if I now click and drag it, it's now changing the stretching. It's stretching it a bit further so that I can then overlap it over this one and fill in that gap here. So now I'm going to show you regenerating these tracks. So I could regenerate these Reaper instructions and MIDI by pressing Generate and then pressing Send to Reaper again. But first I'm going to select Send Tracks After Generating which means it will just automatically send the tracks. I won't have to press Send to Reaper. Also, I mentioned earlier that all of these settings are shown just by clicking this button, and you can hide them that way as well. So really, if you use the same settings here all the time, which you certainly could, you could just set them and then close this, and you never even really need to go in there again. But before I press Generate, I think I actually want to keep the bass track here. I want to generate a new one, but I do want to keep this as well as, as an option. It will only regenerate tracks with BB1, BB2, etc. in the track name, so simply changing the track name here will ensure that it's kept. Actually, I'll do that with the piano track too. I'll leave the other settings here and press Generate. And you can see it's generated the new tracks and automatically sent them. And it's preserved my bass and my piano tracks, but has given me new ones. I could now comp together a single bass track by just taking phrases from both. And same with piano. Now, everything I've done so far has involved these Reaper instructions. However, you may want to just keep it simple and just generate whole waves of the individual tracks. I'll remove the check from Use Reaper Instructions. Also note that Move to Project Folder is selected. And I'll regenerate. And now these whole tracks are added as well.
And now I'll show you, here is the location where I had saved the Reaper file, sambasong.rpp. And you can see those new WAV files I just created have automatically been moved here because of that setting. I hope you enjoy all of the great new features in the Banana Box for Mac DAW plugin version 6. Thanks for watching and have fun. Mm -hmm.